Venezuela. A lot of people are talking about the complicated situation in my home country, and there is a lot of misinformation. So I did a bunch of research to explain in the clearest way possible what is going on in a way that I hope people can understand, because goddamn doesn't matter right now. Will this be funny? No, I am very much not in a funny mood. So let's begin with some important bullet points. One, what is happening in Venezuela is not a U.S.-backed coup. Two, this is not a fight between the Venezuelan right wing and the Venezuelan left wing. This is a fight of the great majority of Venezuelans to democratically get rid of an illegitimate and punitive dictatorship, a dictatorship responsible for countless human rights abuses. Three, the people of Venezuela are seeking fair democratic elections using the laws written in our constitution. Four, Juan Guaido did not just declare himself president out of nowhere. That is not how it worked. So let's answer some questions. Who is the interim president Juan Guaido? Juan Guaido is not a right-wing politician, but the son of a taxi driver and a liberal representative in Congress. Guaido was elected by the Venezuelan people to be a representative in Venezuela's National Assembly. He is acting as interim president, as in temporary president, until democratic elections can be ensured, which is, by the way, dictated by law in the Constitution when a president is deemed illegitimate. In other words, this is not a coup. Next question. Why is President Nicolás Maduro illegitimate? Now, this may take a little bit longer because there's a lot, but let's speed this thing up and start in 2017. In 2017, the Supreme Court that was handpicked by Nicolás Maduro's party nullified and stripped the National Assembly or Congress of their powers. The National Assembly was chosen by vote and was the only government institution that was run by an opposition majority. Imagine when the Democrats took the House, if Trump was like, no, I don't like this anymore. The House is no longer a legitimate part of government. And here's another House that I made up with everyone that agrees with me. Americans would be furious. So too are Venezuelans. Venezuela erupted in protests. Hundreds of protesters, most of them teenagers, were detained, some of whom were tortured and murdered. Meanwhile, despite these protests, Maduro made his own Congress that he could control, just like that. Fast forward to May 20th, 2018, where this illegitimate Congress calls for presidential elections. Now, during these elections, the most popular opposition candidates are either jailed, exiled, or banned from running. In other words, there is no legitimate way for the opposition to run. So these sham presidential elections are held anyway by Maduro's government, where only 20% of the population voted. However, a lot of the 20% were public employees who were intimidated into voting by threats from the government. These were called illegitimate elections, not just by the Venezuelan people, but by the international community. Everyone was on board saying, yeah, this shit's f***ed up. And if it's anything, it's definitely undemocratic. Now, if you're wondering how the Venezuelan people truly feel about this, here are some statistics. According to recent polls, over 80% of Venezuelans disapprove of Maduro's government because there is a lot to disapprove of. Maduro took the minimum wage from $350 a month to $7 a month. Meanwhile, inflation hit 1.7 million percent in 2018, with the IMF projecting 10 million percent in 2019. So the daily minimum wage can't buy two eggs. According to UN projections, over 5 million people have left the country, causing a refugee crisis of Syrian proportions. That's more than 10 percent of the Venezuelan population. There is such a shortage of medical supplies that people are dying from previously eradicated diseases like polio because there aren't any vaccines. The economy is a disaster in a country that sits on the world's largest oil reserves. So where's all this money going? People in Maduro's government. Venezuela is the top 10 most corrupt country in the world, according to the Corruptions Perception Index. The media in Venezuela who should be reporting on this shit is censored and dissidents are jailed. Over 5,000 people since 2014 have been detained for speaking out against the government. And just since last week, when Guaido was elected, 791 people have been jailed. So what is happening now? Interim President Juan Guaido has been backed by the international community. Yes, this includes the United States, but do you know who else backs Juan Guaido that isn't Trump? Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Germany, the Socialist Party that runs Albania, Canada's progressive prince, Justin Trudeau, Australia, Paraguay, Peru, the government run by the Socialist Party of Spain, whose president said what is going on in Venezuela is the opposite of socialism. The list goes on. So that was a lot of information and I am exhausted and I'm not exhausted because I had to explain this to you, but I'm exhausted because the situation in Venezuela 
has been talked about in the forms of political ideologies and politicians and uh, political leanings. And it's, it's, the conversation has completely strayed away from what actually matters, which is the Venezuelan people. On a personal level, my immediate family, my father is exiled from back home. My extended family, they go out on these protests. My uncle is in jail for being a journalist that tried to shed light on what was going on. My cousin had to leave Venezuela because they were after him as well. This has affected everybody on a human level. And it doesn't matter what leanings you have in an ideological political standpoint. This is about people. This is about people wanting their country back. That's it. And if you have any more questions, ask a Venezuelan and they can tell you from their personal human level how it's affected them. Please listen.